Welcome back everyone from their mech stack tech. Today we're going over an upgrade guide for Tinker Time from Mark to the Machine. We have a budget of $50 and we're looking to add combos that will let us close out the game. Before we get to the 10 cards we're taking out, I've noticed that less than 2% of you are subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy deck techs, upgrade guides, and eventually want to watch me and some friends play commander games with the decks that I go over, please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content. Let's get going. So, Gimbal Gremlin Prodigy is going to create us an artifact creature at the end of each of our turns, as well as grant artifact creatures we have Trample. With this in mind, you might think we're adding a lot of uh, artifact creatures, a way to generate a lot of artifact creatures in general, but we're actually focused more on creating just any artifacts. Uh, we're going to hope to dig through our deck to find any number of combos that just let us end the game, leaving us the victor. Uh, but first we need to make some room, so let's go over what we're taking out. Starting off with a Bloodforge Battle Axe. You know, it kind of works well with our commander in the sense that it's going to create an extra token every time it comes in and, like, deals some damage. And, as, you know, over time we're kind of getting that, like, extra damage in, right? So every turn it's going to double, theoretically. Uh, but it's honestly just... It's a little slow, and we have to deal damage to trigger that ability. So, for that reason, we're cutting the Bloodforge Battle Axe. Chaos Warp. So, I know that this can actually get rid of, like, a threat on the board. But, it also potentially just, like, brings out another new threat. Uh, so, for that reason, we're cutting it. Crack Open is a decent way to destroy some pesky artifact or enchantment, and we get a treasure in return. But it's a little slow at sorcery speed, and I just think that there are better ways to destroy artifacts and enchantments than crack open. Cutthroat Navigator is a reliable source of ramp and card draw, but he is drawing everyone a card, and group hug effects like this just aren't my thing. Fractured Power Stone adds one mana for two mana, so like not a bad mana rock. Uh, you can also tap it to roll the planar die if you're playing some Planescape. Uh, so I'm actually just taking out the planar stuff. Not an awful mana rock, but just not really what we're looking for, so I'ma cut it. Icar Elixir is in a very, like, similar boat, right? It cares about the Planescape stuff, so we're gonna get rid of it. Uh, but it's basically just an upgraded version of that Fractured Power Stone. Path of the Animist, uh... You know, out for the same reason, basically, right? It has to do with playing Planescape. If you're not playing Planescape, you really don't want cards in there that are, you know, Planescape-specific. Uh, you know, it is a nice form of ramp. Uh, and the fact that we're getting rid of three ramp things is, like, maybe a little, little shaky. But I think it's fine in the end. You know, if you really want to replace this with, like, a Kodama's Reach or something, you know, cheaper to cast, getting the same amount of lands... Granted, you're not getting them both on the battlefield tapped, but is what it is. Sandsteep War Riders is actually pretty good in the sense that, like, it's going to let us bolster based on the number of differently named artifacts on our field. And, like, with our commander, all of our artifact creatures have trample. If Sandsteep War Rider is actually the weakest creature on the field, we actually have just a bunch of artifacts with different names. They can get pretty beefy pretty quick. Um, that being said, you know, we're not really looking to win via combat with the changes I'm making. So, yeah, you could swap him out for something else if you really wanted to, but for right now, Stand Steep War Riders is out. Vampire's Vengeance will deal two damage to all non-vampires, but we actually have very few vampires in the deck and in fact a lot of our you know artifact token creatures are very small right they teeny tiny and this will, will destroy all of them you know, if your opponent's also playing a token deck and generating a lot of smaller dudes maybe vampire's vengeance is okay but it's just not really what we're looking for here lastly we have the workshop elders uh, so they grant flying to all of our artifact creatures, which is nice. Uh, but they're a little expensive. 
They also do let us take a non-creature artifact and turn it into an artifact creature, making it a 4-4 with those plus one plus ones. But at seven mana, it's a little steep. So we're just gonna get those out of here. With those 10 cards out, you know, what 10 cards are we adding in? Starting off, we actually have uh, Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. So this is one of our alternate win cons. So if we would draw a card and there are no cards left in the deck, we actually just win. Uh, with this plus one, we get to go ahead and put the top two cards of our grave, our, sorry, not our grave, of our library into the graveyard and draw a card. And how are we comboing off with Jace, Wielder of Mysteries? Tinker Time has provided us a card to do just that in the form of Dance with Calamity. It's an 8-cost spell that lets us shuffle our library, and then as many times as we want, we get to exile cards off the top of our library. Uh, if the total mana value of those cards exiled this way is 13 or less, we can cast them for free, which is nice, but really not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is exiling our entire deck. Get that out of here. <laughs> we don't want it. Uh, so, Jace is on the field, cast Dance with Calamity, Exile the entire deck. Use his plus one. Win game. Right? In a very similar vein, we have our Laboratory Maniac. Right? So, same thing. If we would draw cards while our library is empty, we just win the game instead. And Thos's Oracle, so we'll exile our entire library. Pay the two blue to get out Thassa. You know, we'll... Go ahead and just get a Thassa's Oracle win. Dance with Calamity. It's kind of expensive though, so let's get ourselves some infinite mana with Kodama of the East Tree and Tireless Provisioner. For this combo to work, we need both those creatures out in the field, and then we're going to play Simic Growth Chamber. When Growth Chamber enters the battlefield, we're going to see three ETB triggers. First, we're going to bounce back. Simic Growth Chamber to our hand. Then, Kodama is going to choose to target nothing at all, and Tireless Provisioner is going to create either a food or a treasure. We're looking for infinite mana in this moment, so we're going to go with treasures. The treasure ET being will trigger Kodama again, allowing us to replay the Simic Growth Chamber. Which will again, just start the combo all over again. We now have infinite treasure, we have infinite food, which means we have infinite life. Things are good for us. Kodama isn't the only one out here able to generate infinite mana though. We also have the Nivix Guild Mage, which works wonders with Brass Bounty. Brass's Bounty will create us a treasure for each land we control. We need at least five lands and at least 11 mana to do this combo. So with Brass's Bounty on the stack, we're gonna activate our Nivix Guild Mage to copy the spell. We'll let the copied version of it resolve, generating us at least five treasures. If we have more lands, great. We're gonna spend four of those five treasures to reactivate our Guild Mage copying the original Brass's Bounty again, and we're just going to do this ad nauseum, right? So now we have infinite mana from our Nivix Guild Mage. Brass's Bounty isn't done yet, though, as it combos with two other cards. Reiterate, which requires access to 13 mana and 7 lands. So it's a little more expensive, but the end result is infinite mana. Uh, so I think we'll find ourselves a way. The other card that Brass's Bounty really combos well with is Mechanized Production. We will need to have, you know, at least seven lands when we play Brass's Bounty, generating us seven treasures, and then we'll need access to another four mana to go ahead and Mechanize Production in one of those treasures. At Upkeep, we'll create a treasure based off of Mechanized Production, and then we'll check to see if we have at least eight with the same name, 
Bam. Instant win for us. Mechanized production isn't done either as it combos with masterful replication to win the game at our upkeep. Winning at least 7 artifacts in the field to do this, with mechanized production being enchanted on one of them. But it can come as a big shock to your opponent when you go from having one copy of an artifact with a nice long clock on the win con to just winning outright. To achieve this, we need to have access to at least 6 mana, and then when we move to upkeep, mechanized production will trigger, holding priority will cast masterful replication. Choosing that second mode. So we're going to choose the artifact that's enchanted with mechanized production. All of our other artifacts will become copies of that artifact until end of turn. Then we resolve mechanized production, creating our eighth copy of that artifact and just winning outright. This same win con can be achieved, though a little clunkier, using dual caster mage in combination with Sahili's artistry. The way this works is that you cast the Healy's Artistry. In response, you go ahead and flash out your dual caster mage, copying the Healy's Artistry. Then you create a token that's a copy of a creature, except that it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Targeting the dual caster mage that's already out, when that one ETBs, you again copy the first one. And now you have infinite copies of your dual caster mage, only he's an artifact instead. Uh, this won't be an upkeep thing because Sahili's artistry is a sorcery, but, you know, it's a good way to get yourself up to those eight artifacts of the same name. You could also get there through Kiki Cheeky Mirror Breaker. How you ask? We're gonna mutate him with the Everquill Phoenix. Uh, so Everquill Phoenix is going to mutate on top of him, and then we're going to go ahead and tap down our Everquill Phoenix using Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker's ability to create a copy of itself and just do this infinitely. So we could do that at upkeep, uh, you know, we could even just do it on, like, our previous turn, generating a bunch of these feathers that are artifacts we could sack to bring our Phoenix back. Don't worry though, Kiki Jiki isn't done putting in the work. We can actually take some extra turns using him with uh, the Time Stream Navigator. We just need to have access to four mana once they're both out in the field. So we're going to tap Kiki Jiki, create a copy of the Time Stream Navigator, pay the four mana, tapping the copy, putting it to the bottom of our library. Tokens can't actually go there, so it just sort of fizzles off anyways. And then BAM! We have an extra turn, we do need the city's blessing to get this, Time Stream Navigator could do that. And with the amount of artifacts that we're generating on a regular basis, you know, reaching, reaching city's blessing is actually really simple. But what if our, uh, our Time Stream Navigator is hanging out in the graveyard? Not to worry, Felidon of the Third Path is going to do the same nonsense. Uh, so he'll create a token that's a copy of a creature in our graveyard, except now it's an artifact in addition to his other types. It has haste and we have to sacrifice it at end step, but we're just going to go ahead and throw that token in the bottom of our library. Take infinite turns. With these infinite turns, we're just going to go ahead and, like, eventually hit one of our win cons. Maybe even win through combat damage, you know, it really just depends on, you know how the rest of the game has been playing out, effectively. Now, the Heat Drawn Detonator um, is not new to the deck, right? I'm not adding it in. It comes with the deck. But a number of these combos generate us infinite artifact tokens. And every time an artifact enters the battlefield, we get to ping an opponent for one damage with the, uh, the Detonator here. So if he's out and you're going infinite with tokens... You know, you effectively just win on the spot. So a nice little little infinite damage there as a treat. Those are my recommendations for upgrading Tinker Time. If you enjoyed the guide, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. Are there cards you think should be added in? Are there are these combos just a little too expensive to play? Let me know in the combos <laughs> the combo section down below. <laughs> um but guys, thanks as always for watching, and good luck with your builds.